Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Javier Endes, Communications Manager at Amcham Colombia, and will be your host today. Thank you for joining us today with a new event, part of the Texas Business Trade and Investment Week, organized by the Amcham Colombia, the Colombo American Chamber of Commerce, in partnership with the Commerce and the Economic Development and Tourism Office at the Texas Governor's Office. Today, we're going to have an Argentina market overview, and for that, it's my pleasure to welcome our friends from Argen Amcham Argentina, uh, and especially uh, Paula Mencio, Director of the Trade Center at Amcham Argentina. Paula, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you, Javier. Good morning, everyone. So I'm responsible for the Trade and Investment Center of Amcham Argentina, and I wanted to thank you very much for your interest in the Argentinian market, of course. Thanks to Amcham Colombia's team for, for inviting us. So I'm going to make a brief introduction of Amcham Argentina, and then I'm going to introduce you the main speakers of this webinar. Uh, Amcham Argentina is the American Chamber of Commerce in Argentina. It's a non-governmental, independent, and not-profit organization with over 100, 100 years of experience in the promotion of bilateral trade an investment between the two countries, but also um, to the region. We currently have more than 600 members company, which employ 400,000 people and have like almost 200 industrial plants offices throughout the country. So these companies also represent the 19% of the GDP, the country, almost the 40% of the tax revenue of the government, and about 20% of the import and 20% of the export. Amcham Argentina members represent almost 42 economy sectors. The main sectors are agribusiness, oil and gas, automotive, and knowledge-based services. And our head offices are based at Buenos Aires City, and also we have a delegation at Córdoba City, another province inside the country. So, in the chat, I'm going to leave you some links, especially to Amcham Connect. It's a platform platform on, of on-demand content, such ebooks, videos, podcasts. The subjects that that we approach there are diversity, innovation, energy, health, and of course, international trade. So I'm going to leave you the links in the chat. And with no further ado, I want to thank Speca and Marela team for accepting the invitation. And I'm going to leave you with, you with Ricardo Castañeda, partner at Becar Varela, his practice Practice area includes merger and acquisition, corporate law, project finance, and energy. And he has been counsel to companies involved in involved in the oil and gas sector, power, infrastructure, and telecommunication and chemical industry. Also, we have Maria Shakespeare, also part of Becker Varela, and he is member of the firm's executive committee. Maria provides corporate advice to local and foreign clients with businesses in Argentina across a wide spectrum of industry. And also we have Florencia Rosati, a partner of the Carvarela. She co-head the firm's intellectual property and telecommunications media and technology department. Her practice area includes litigation and advice to client on trademarker, copyright, entrepreneurship, communication and new technologies. So thank you very much. And Ricardo. Okay, Paula, many thanks for the introduction. Well, I first of all I wanted to let you know what is happening in Argentina. I think that a quick overview of our current economic situation is suitable for this webinar. And then we can enter into to describe what we see in the market and what we see as business opportunities right now in Argentina. Now, I don't know how much you know about Argentina, but Argentina has been, uh, let's say, in recession for many years right now, uh, with a very little growth in the GDP. Uh, this, this comes uh, 
for many years now, from the Christina Kirchner's administration, then going through Macri's administration, and now Alberto Fernandez administration, uh, and with uh, a very big uh, account that led, for example, in Macri's administration for uh, the financing of for Argentina going through the international markets and get uh, financing for international uh, uh, loans, basically from IMF. Argentina has a very big loan from IMF, around of uh, 45 billion uh, dollars. And then after that, I'm going to explain why is this relevant for this chat. Uh, and this deficit situation from Argentina was increased because of the pandemic. Uh, uh, as everybody knows, that the pandemic made governments to spend more money in in subsidies and, and in to for the for the for the private sector to get through uh, the pandemic situation. Uh, having said that, this created a situation in Argentina where we have a, a very high inflation. The, the this year inflation is going to be around fifty percent or more. Uh, and that created uh, also in the population of Argentina uh, a mistrust in uh, the value of the peso. So uh, the population of Argentina uh, uses uh, the US dollar as a currency for savings. And that, that created a, a great demand of dollars in Argentina, which in turn created that our central bank's reserves uh, went down alone a lot. So the central bank. Uh, was uh, was driven to to take measures in order to save those reserves with restrictions in the purchase of U.S. dollars. Nowadays, Argentina is is going through a negotiation with IMF. Uh, markets, international markets, are really closed for Argentina, so financing in Argentina right now is very difficult. So we, we are we see this and we, we think and we believe in our firm that this will continue until at least Argentina reaches to an agreement with IMF to pay the 45 million and extend the terms of payments uh, with waivers for the following year. So Argentina also went through elections uh, one month ago, midterm elections for the Congress. Uh, the, 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 the official uh, party lost the elections, it means that the government, the, the Congress now, uh, there is uh, a balance in the Congress, so nobody, no party has the majority of the Congress, and that will create that uh, any new law in Argentina will need a negotiation, at least among the, uh, the two or three main uh, political parties in Argentina. Well, Although Argentina is going through a difficult economic situation, we still see opportunities in the country. As you know, Argentina uh, has very good uh, natural resources, one of the best natural resources in the world in terms of uh, oil and gas, uh, mining, power. Uh, so uh, the oil and gas industry in Argentina is very strong. We have one of the best reservoirs of uh, shale and uh, gas and oil in what we call the Baca Muerta uh, Reservoir. There uh, we have many international and local players uh, with concessions, oil and gas concessions in the Baca Muerta Reservoir. Uh, uh, also in the south of Argentina, we have uh, uh, a lot of oil, oil and gas activity. And now with an option that came through Two years ago, two or three years ago, there's also a offshore exploration uh, in, in Argentina. And in terms of oil and gas production, we, we have been we have seen that in the last month of the year there has been an increase in production, both in natural gas and in oil. Natural gas uh, were driven by a program that the government launched. Uh, one year ago, which is called Plan Gas 4, which is a plan where uh, producers enter into contracts for four years with, with purchasers of gas, mainly uh, CAMESA, which is the administration of, 
of the system and with a fixed price and that generated that uh, producers, uh, natural gas producers, uh, increased their production. Uh, in addition, uh, what we are seeing is that the gas production in Bolivia is declining and, and the uh, LNG gas prices, international gas prices are going up. So there's opportunity also for more production of gas in Argentina, the problem that we are seeing and there is where we are seeing investment opportunities uh, is, is in the midstream uh, area where Argentina uh, needs uh, a new pipeline between the Neuquén Basin, which is in the south of Argentina, to connect uh, uh, the pipeline to uh, the north and supply the north with uh, natural gas coming from Baca Muerta. In terms of oil and gas, we also have seen an oil, sorry, we also have seen a, an increase in, in production based mainly because of the increase of price, international prices in oil. Uh, uh, the Argentine system, what, what uh, you cannot export uh, oil gas uh, without a government authorization in Argentina. So the government demands from producers that they need to supply firstly uh, the, the local or domestic market, and then the, the excess of production can be exported uh, worldwide. No? Uh, and uh, as a consequence of that, and, and the new prices of the oil uh, in the world, uh, they are, we have seen an increase in, in production also in, in Baca Muerta in terms of oil. The problem that we are seeing is that uh, Argentina needs uh, a lot of infrastructure, uh, basically in the midstream, because in order to export this new production of oil, we need new pipelines uh, and a new uh, say storage uh, capacity. Uh, so there we also see uh, many opportunities. In terms of gas, uh, natural gas uh, production, we also see opportunities in, in treatment of natural gas because the new natural gas that is that is coming from Baco Muerte is very rich in liquids. So uh, there is a need for uh, treatment plants uh, for the natural gas in order for that uh, natural gas to be uh, transported through the pipelines. Uh, and Argentina is also uh, very committed to the energy transition and to meet uh, the global uh, clean energy goals. So we are we are also seeing interest in in hydrogen projects, pilots, uh, also related to green uh, hydrogen and blue hydrogen. Argentina, as I said, is a very big producer of natural gas with a lot of potential in that area, and and as we are seeing that rich uh, natural gas is coming from Baca Muerta, we also see. Uh, uh, room for investment in other uh, products derived from natural gas. No? Well, this is this is the overview of, of the oil and gas industry. I can also give you a, a glimpse of uh, the electricity sector. Argentina uh, was very committed also with the transition of electricity into clean clean energy. Uh, it was very important what the Macri administration did in that area because it set uh, goals for a transformation of the uh, electricity matrix from thermal to renewable energy. Nowadays, we are almost at 13% of the matrix being supplied with uh, renewable energy. Uh, we have uh, about 8.5 gigawatts of renewable energy right now in the grid. This was because of, of the options that the government did between 2015 and 2019, and because of uh, the, the opening of the private market between um, 
generators and large users that they are allowed to enter into power purchase agreements without the intervention of the government. Uh, still, our matrix is basically a thermal matrix, so almost 67% uh, of the matrix is based on th uh, thermal power generation. Um, and Argentina is also, is also needing infrastructure in the electricity area because although we have uh, very good new projects in terms of renewable energy and even in, in thermal energy, there's a need for more transmission lines and that uh, the building of these new transmission lines will be also subject to uh, what is going to happen with the IMF negotiation and, and if Argentina is going to be open for the international credit markets again, because as you may know, this, this kind of infrastructure uh, requires a lot of uh, capital and investment. Well, I, this is all for me. I don't know, Maria, if you want to continue. Sure, so thank you, Ricardo, and well, thank you very much uh, to the Amtam for having us here. Paula, thank you for the introduction. We were um, visiting, we were in, La in Florida last week, um, also discussing investment opportunities with different US companies. And so when we were thinking what kind of uh, businesses you could be interested in, of course, uh, energy and technology-based companies or deals were one of the most relevant or the ones that we um, consider you could have more interest in. In Argentina, well, as Paula was saying, I co-lead the department, the FinTech department, as well as the M&A department. And there's a common point in those two practices uh, very lately, uh, lately, and it has to do with uh, technology-based companies. Uh, those are uh, really a hot topic these days uh, in the region, I would say, not only in Argentina, and we see that uh, these kind of businesses, as they are dispersed in multiple jurisdictions, are most of the time looked as um, a, a regional opportunity. And that's the way we, we, we wanted to, to show it. Just to go to straight to the point, uh, fintech businesses, we call, we address fintech uh, businesses as, uh, or we understand fintech businesses as any business that um, merges finance and technology in any, in any form. Um, in Argentina, and of course, after the pandemic, uh, these kind of businesses really flourished. There are a number of businesses and neobanks and fintech, uh, proper uh, native fintech businesses. There are, in the last year, more than 300 fintech businesses, as the chamber, fintech chamber uh, mentions. And the more developed verticals of business are uh, digital payments and lending in, in, in Argentina, but there are a number of other verticals that are also well developed, such as IT services, crypto, blockchain, are uh, open banking, um, credit cards. Those businesses are really, uh, there's a lot going on uh, in Argentina and the region. Um, of course, there is in Argentina, there is no a particular law regulating all the fintech businesses, but there are a number of regulations that are dispersed in the, in the legal world that do apply to fintech businesses. The most important, of course, is the financial entities law, which is the one that uh, every fintech will try not to uh, be applicable, which is um, the one that regulates uh, the banking industry, which is the most regulated industry in, in, in Argentina, is similar to pharma in the sense of the uh, amount of regulation that applies to, to, to bank. So what all fintechs try to do is to avoid financial intermediation, and as long as they do not 
uh, do financial intermediation, they will be out of out of reach of that law uh, in general terms. There are some laws that are interesting to to consider, such as the entrepreneurship law, because it provides a, a tax a benefits for investments in this kind of, a, of, of businesses, as well as the knowledge economy law, because it also provides some very interesting tax benefits for investment in companies that require IT capital, that are IT capital in, in, in intensive uh, companies that require investments in in IT IP matters can be uh, or can have the benefit of tax uh, benefits and, and exemptions and of course other laws such as data protection law competition law AML laws um, consumer laws all those all those laws shall uh, apply to these kind of businesses and shall be um, shall be reviewed when considering these kind of businesses. Um, just a note on maybe those uh, two verticals that are really uh, relevant these days and are tracing the, the current era of, on fintech. And this go, goes beyond Argentina, but particularly in Argentina. And there's a question in the chat that I will try to, to address with this. In Argentina, we have currently some restrictions on foreign exchange. Uh, we have foreign exchange restrictions and also some restrictions that apply to import and payment of US dollars abroad. Um, as you may, may also know, we also have an inflation, a high inflation uh, ratio. And that that is the reason why, or in part, that is the reason why cryptocurrency businesses have, have grown uh, very fast in Argentina as a manner to cover from inflation and also to protect uh, against the foreign exchange uh, regulations that limit the transfer of US dollars abroad. So it is true that there are restrictions, restrictions that are uh, on those topics and restrictions on on import of of assets as one of the questions uh, addressed in the, in the chat um, are these kind of restrictions are a picture in motion we need to look closely uh, when and what we do need to comply with to be able to uh, make payments of us dollars abroad import of goods is a way of i mean it's um, a permitted manner of transferring funds abroad, but there are procedures and there are restrictions that you need to follow just to ensure that that payment is uh, duly completed. There is like a registration of a mandatory registration of, of the import of, or the cause of payment, and then uh, the payment needs to, to follow a number of, of steps, but in general terms, it is permitted to, to pay imports uh, abroad, although these mechanisms should be uh, reviewed and followed. And so, uh, and, and as I was saying, one of the, uh, of the ways of being able to transfer dollars abroad on a legal uh, fashion is the cryptocurrency that um, that would permit an Argentine uh, citizen or company or uh, someone uh, with uh, Argentine pesos in Argentina to acquire cryptocurrency that can be transferred or sold abroad and by means of, of such receive US dollars as payment uh, abroad. Um, Another issue that another business that is really uh, important these days in Argentina is the businesses that are connected with open banking, which is also a, a very hot topic in the US too. You know, this idea that uh, financial institutions need to open their information and share their systems and their information with third parties through APIs or 
a different software or, or technology mechanisms just to uh, facilitate the providing of different services, more services, more financial services, more and on, more cheap to the end users is something that everybody is discussing. And of course, from the legal from 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 the legal standpoint, this triggers a number of um, doubts and, and and concerns that should be addressed, such as the protection of the information of the user. A confidentiality, IT security, and other uh, legal uh, matters. But this is something that is going on in, Ar in, in Argentina, it's happening right now, and has triggered a number of alliances, MA transactions, um, new fintechs trading, and um, making different arrangements with banks and with other fintechs and making this ecosystem grow and grow uh, in a very rapid way. And of course, the, the, the first uh, investments to come from abroad were the multilaterals, because of course, FinTech have an opportunity or, or pose, presents an opportunity for financial inclusion. So anything that is um, connected with impact investments or that can link, you know, technology with uh, with a with a with an impact in the society, which is the the the, move, the most important for multilaterals. Presents a, a, an an attractive opportunity for investments, but after multilaterals, lots of uh, private equity, venture capital, and corporate venture capital. Uh, are investing in these kind of businesses, in fintech businesses. And what is interesting is that the ticket is, tickets are really high. Uh, just to number, just to mention a few of the last investments in Argentina, for instance, there is Lemon Cash uh, and the region, because these investments mostly, even if they are made in Argentina, tend to finance the expansion of these kind of businesses in the region. Um, so, for instance, Lemon Cash, the last round was 16 million, one beat 11 million, and Pomelo received 35 million dollars uh, only in one round, only a couple of this last month, just to mention the, uh, a few of the last uh, month. Um, and well, maybe with with this quick introduction, I can uh, give the the floor to Florencia, who will share with us some IP matters of this kind of of, of investments or interests. Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to talk to you about some trends, uh, not only in the IP field, but also in the TMT telecommunications media and technology some of which uh, Maria has mentioned, uh, but what we see working with our clients is um, a big growth of uh, businesses that have to do with software development. We have in, in, in Argentina many technological poles in different cities, such as the city of Buenos Aires, Tandil, uh, the, the city of Rosario in the province of Santa Fe and the province of Córdoba. And we have, uh, Maria mentioned it, but uh, we have uh, lots of m and acquisitions of software developing companies and also companies hiring local developers to work for, uh, work for hire for uh, American companies. We, we see a lot of that. We also see a lot of artificial intelligence uh, developing companies that are foreign companies that come to Argentina to provide services locally or register a local company to do this. Uh, and we have seen services such as uh, biometric validation, very much used in fintech and all financial entities, uh, businesses, fraud prevention, uh, brand intelligence, threat and cyber security also many companies involved in this business that as you know has been grown a lot in the last uh, years uh, also uh, artificial intelligence in the health sector 
is growing fast uh, these years. And we also see a lot of um, developer development in companies that are digital platforms providing streaming both in audio or video and companies providing a voice over IP. These are OTT platforms that are not currently uh, regulated from a telecommunications standpoint in Argentina. So for now, they, they do not require to obtain a license, a telecommunications license to operate. This might change in the future and we have to analyze each case carefully, but uh, for now, the voice over IP and the streaming of video and music uh, do not need to obtain a license in Argentina. We also see uh, many companies that provide uh, digital platforms for advertising and for advertising intermediaries and for the bidding of, of advertising spaces. This is a trend that is also growing. And in the telecommunications field, we see um, many companies uh, providing non-geostationary satellite services, mainly for the provision of internet or data transmission or other value-added uh, services. Then we see um, m and in the field of telecommunications towers, some telecommunications uh, uh, companies that have towers have been acquiring local companies that uh, are already in Argentina. Uh, and then we have also uh, lots of work in what is intermediary, internet intermediary, which is not expressly regulated in Argentina, but we have a case law, lots of case law in this connection, uh, either involving um, social media or marketplaces and companies that uh, are in those fields and need to know how are they regulated or what they have to take into account. Um, data privacy is still a, a trend that is transversal to all fields and all the industries. We work a lot uh, on these aspects, for example, with fintechs and what Maria was mentioning before of open banking and how this may affect data privacy regulations. So this is mostly the, the trends that we see in the technology, telecoms and intellectual property sectors. These are the, the this is a scope that is um, most moving in the last years. Um, someone asked regarding uh, cybersecurity and small and media, uh, medium businesses, if we have uh, any statistics. I don't have a currently, current statistics of the last year or so of the pandemic, but before the pandemic, more than 60% of the cybersecurity attacks were addressed to, to small and medium businesses, which of course are more vulnerable than, than big businesses. Uh, we work a lot on uh, also data privacy aspects involving uh, cybersecurity attacks. This is do I have to report the data protection authority? Do I have to report the data subjects that their data has been um, breached? Um, so we, we work together with companies on this aspect of the law too. Uh, there has been a, a lot, as, 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 as a lot has been in the world, Argentina has not been the exemption in cybersecurity uh, side. Then I would like to mention uh, that for companies that import their products or services to Argentina, our intellectual property regime is quite similar to uh, other developed uh, countries such as the US. We, we have uh, software protection through the Copyright Act. We also have uh, patent and trademark laws and we have um, confidentiality I'm sorry, confidentiality information law. So uh, you, of course, if you are importing products or services, 
you should assess on whether you need to register those products uh, under the, uh, for example, Copyright Act or the Trademark or Patent Acts, but you will be protected and your products will have uh, due protection under Argentine legislation. So this is a quick overview from the IP and TMT sectors. And uh, if Maria and Ricardo have no further comments, we are open to, to questions. I see there some other questions. Yes, uh, I, I, we would like to, to thank you, all of you, for, for this uh, overview in different aspects for the Argentina uh, business uh, possibilities. We have a lot of questions. Uh, in, in our chat, let me let me start uh, breathing them and and I don't know if Paula can help us to to see which one of the speakers can can uh, can be solving these these questions. Uh, actually, we have a, a question in Spanish. I'm going to to read it. My name is uh, my, my, my name is Tony Quintana, uh, Advanced Logistics for Aerospace. Uh, uh, y pregunta, un servidor ha estado a cargo del desarrollo de negocios para varias empresas en la región, inclusive Argentina, durante los pasados 30 años. Dice, tenemos entendido eh, la entrada y, y entrada y salida a Buenos Aires hoy está muy complicada. ¿Pudiesen comentar cuál es el plan del gobierno para abrir nuevamente eh, el país a inversión extranjera? Eh, no sé eh, si, quién pudiera ayudarnos con, con luces sobre este tema. Bueno, well, I, I gotta take this one. Um, Go ahead, please. Yes, yes. It's... You are right, as, as Maria and I was telling you before, Argentina is lacking of dollars, so the Central Bank of Argentina issued a series of regulation trying to restrict uh, the purchase and sale of US dollars within Argentina. This also has affected, obviously, the import and export uh, market, uh, mainly the export market, because you are obliged to liquidate uh, the money that you collect abroad into Argentina at, at the official exchange rate. And it has limited also uh, the, the imports. Although imports are allowed in Argentina and you're allowed to pay uh, imports uh, through the official channel, uh, there are a series of requirements that importers have to meet in order to access to this kind of, of currency sold by the by the national government, no? And this, in many times, uh, have complicated uh, the import of goods into Argentina. This is something that is now being discussed between the government and uh, the, the IMF, because obviously the IMF uh, is seeking for the government to uh, release all the restrictions that are now on uh, the purchase and sale of US dollars in Argentina, this will obviously create uh, that the price of the official uh, dollar is going to go up very quickly and probably is going to create in the short term uh, more inflation in Argentina. That's why uh, uh, that's why there is a tough discussion on this one between the government and the IMF, uh, because obviously this will have an effect on the poor people in Argentina, basically the poor people is, that is the people that is most affected by inflation, no? And, and going to what is happening in the market, we are seeing delays in imports in, in, in some areas uh, of, of, or in respect of some goods, uh, for, but in other areas, uh, imports are, are going through very well, let's say for investment in infrastructure or, or for medical uh, supplies, uh, and in cases where we are seeing delays in imports, uh, what we are also seeing is that companies are seeking uh, the intervention of the, the courts uh, in order for them to get them uh, the access uh, to the money to pay those imports. We, we have a very, let's say, a very active department, uh, trade department that, that is dealing with those cases and, and judges are giving uh, importers uh, the right uh, to get access to to the imports and for the payment of of the goods uh, abroad. Yeah, uh, that leads me to the other question from Gustavo Fernandez. He he asked if probably in the short term or medium term, 
this will this situation will be improving. I mean, if you mentioned that the government is talking with the IMF and uh, you know, a lot of companies are dealing with, with, with specific cases in, in the courts. So, do you think in the in the midterm there's going to be a, a public policy to improve the import uh, situation? I think so because uh, that is going to be a condition for the renegotiation of the financing with the IMF, and this is. This is a situation that cannot be tolerated uh, for a long term. No, uh, there's something uh, will happen uh, because, the, as, as I said before, the government is is really lacking of, of U.S. dollars, and nobody wants to to sell U.S. dollars in the official market. So, uh, sooner or later, the government will need to do something about this. There's no other solution. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the question here is how is going to happen? If it's going to happen in an orderly way with a plan or it's going to be imposed by the conditions on the market. And that would be uh, more difficult for the economy than open here. The thing, if there is no, no plan for this. Okay, uh, one more question from Raul. Uh, Raul Sanabria, he, he, he has, has you actually, Ricardo, what is the best procedure that an exporter from Texas has to follow to collect its payment. What type of taxes are involved? It's an import uh, or a debt. Uh, let me see. He, he, he's, he mentioned is he mentioned an exporter. What is the best yes. procedure that an exporter from Texas has to follow to collect its payment? What type of taxes are involved? Well, we, 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 we no, none of us is a tax expert here, no. <laughs> uh, but what what can I tell you is this is a problem of the importer, not the exporter. No, the exporter will issue its invoice, will will deliver uh, the goods uh, is committed to deliver, and then he should receive payment uh, in due time. No, and I think that. Uh, in that case, I would talk to the importer if the importer uh, requires additional an additional term for payment or not, and uh, it will depend also in the kind of food that you want to import into Argentina. No, because as I said, uh, the restrictions are more for not uh, the basic goods that you need for the economy. No, uh, so it will depend. And, if, and I don't know who made the question, but if you want, we can give you more information offline and with our trade department. Yeah, I, I was I was about to mention that if, if, if probably if, uh, Paula uh, put on on the chat her email. Uh, probably uh, for this kind of questions, so specific questions, you can write her uh, an email, and she will she will give you the proper answer or deliver uh, to the right person to to give you the the correct information. Uh, let, let me uh, yeah, yeah. continue with, with the questions. I just, I just put my, I just sent my email on the chat. Okay. Great. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's continue. Uh, Pedro Correa uh, asks: Any statistics regarding activities of cyber criminals in the SMB sector in Argentina? Any statistics regarding activities of cyber criminals in the SMB sector in Argentina? I, I mentioned that, Javier, when I was speaking. Uh, we, we don't have statistics of the last two years of the pandemic, but prior to the pandemic, uh, statistics said that, for example, uh, small and medium businesses were the, the target of cyber attacks in more than 60% of those attacks. So they were more vulnerable to attacks than big uh, companies. Thank you. Uh, this is a question uh, to Ms. Maria. Uh, what is the info on the tax benefits for IT investors? You, you're on mute, Maria. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, I mentioned the knowledge law, uh, which provides for tax benefits. That's, a, I can put the number here, so, or a link. I, I will just copy the link, so 
you can see the law and there are regulations on that law that it, that needs to be followed just to ensure that you will get the benefit. Um, and then Florencia mentioned also some uh, benefits uh, regarding um, IP registration and the international treaties. Thank you. Uh, Pedro Correa, uh, he, he asked, have providers of blockchain solutions become active in the banking, financial, or trust-related markets in Argentina? I'll take that one too. Um, well, yes, blockchain providers are very active these days, and the whole financial system is looking at this kind of technology as a technology that is um, secure uh, that and that would allow or allow or has the capability to allow faster and cheaper transactions more transactions in less time and for less price. So everybody's looking at it. There's a project of the IDB. They are developing a, a blockchain for all Latin America that could be used in the future for any organization that wants to provide services on that blockchain. And there, there are, of course, a, a number of, of, of other developments. I mentioned this one because it's very interesting to see a project that will expand throughout uh, Latin America. It's not only limited to Argentina. Um, but at the same time, uh, there is no specific regulation on that. It's uh, on blockchain being used by financial entities yet. Uh, but it's true that many financial entities are transacting, uh, investigating, uh, acquiring blockchain companies uh, with that aim. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. How about satellite enable Internet of Things for regions in areas without cell telecom coverage? Have you detected such activities? Yes, there, there's also activities uh, in that area. We haven't had clients uh, working on IoT uh, through satellite services. We do have clients that work uh, with IoT uh, through other telecoms infrastructure, but there are companies, uh, for example, Orbcom is one of those companies, Ignova Space or Telespacio are companies that work in IoT through satellite services. Yes. Great. Uh, Pedro, Pedro asks, uh, as, uh, Maria, what is the name of the Latin blockchain project that you mentioned? Lack chain, L A C chain. It's a, a IDB. Uh, I can I can also paste the um, the link to the web page so you can find out about this or, or we can I can tell you after what we, with Florencia we are cooperating on that development on the legal aspects of this development but it's really interesting so happy to to share more information on this project which is really interesting I will I was pasting pasting the knowledge um, economy uh, law number so you can see it and I can look up for this link so you can have more information on, on this interesting project. Thank you. And of course, no, you know, blockchain being, uh, you know, the, 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 the technology for, for, for Bitcoin also links very much with cryptocurrency uh, matters. So it's also a hot topic because of that, because it serves as, as the basis, not only for financial services of the future, but also for the for Bitcoin, which is the most used uh, cryptocurrency. Great, thank you. Pedro is, is, is very excited about that. He says my company would love to participate. And Florencia just uh, just placed the, the link uh, of the URL in, in, the, in the chat, so you can probably start uh, checking on, on that. Or if, if you have even more questions, you can we can we can put you in contact in, in private so you can sure. exchange information. Uh, at this moment, we don't have any, any more questions. Uh, we would like to thank you for all our speakers or our, our friends from Amcham Argentina to give us this overview. I don't know if Paula would like to to close with some remarks and, and, and remind us uh, where we can contact you for more information uh, about the Amcham Connect project uh, and so on. Thank Javier. Thank you very much. And thank you, of course, to Ricardo, Florencia, and Maria. Um, my email 
it's already on the chat, but I'm going to write it again. So you can write me for any question that you have. Maybe I can help you with some contacts. Maybe I already have the answer, but um, you can write me for, for any question. And of course, thank you very much to, to Amcham Colombia, to Javier, Jennifer, and of course to Shirley um, from the government office of Texas. And I'm here for you if you if you need anything. Thank you very much, Paula, and thank you for all the companies that uh, joined us today from from Texas. Uh, we will see you in the next uh, in the next event uh, with, with this markets overview from other um, countries in the region. Thank you very much, and have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. Hasta pronto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have bye. a nice rest of the day. Thank bye. you.